We have gotten multiple requests to compare Christopher Nolan to David Fincher. So I went ahead and I made a list of each of their films. They, neither one of them have a ton of Hollywood films. Just goes to show, if you request, if we think it's reasonable, mm. we will be more than happy to meet you in the middle. So fucking subscribe, goddammit. Yeah, do it. So this is a, a multiple request video. So Christopher Nolan's... Big films, Interstellar, The Dark Knight Rises, Inception, The Dark Knight, The Prestige, Batman Begins, Insomnia, Memento, Following. Pretty good list. David Fincher, Gone Girl, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Social Network, The Curious Case of Benjamin's Buttons, <laughs> Zodiac, panic room and he calls me the jackass <laughs> see that's that one got a real laugh i tried to figure out what that would be about that. Like, popping off. <laughs> benjamin's buttons just won't stay on we can't dress this kid i'm just picturing like like an old man coming in like my name's benjamin would you like to see my Buttons. <laughs> and he's just got like a little mason jar full of obscure, unmatching, unyielding right, buttons. Uh, <laughs> so Zodiac, Panic Room, Fight Club, The Game, Seven, and Alien 3, which is really his weakest film, a 6.4. That's considered where the Alien franchise went downhill. So those are two pretty even lists, uh, just under 10 just around 10 movies for each one of those two. So what are your thoughts? Just just listening to those lists right off the bat. What are your thoughts? I mean, right off the right off the bat, I'm more more leaning towards David Fincher cuz I love The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Uh Gone Girl was definitely an interesting movie. Yep. Uh The, the Curious Case of Benjamin Buttons was although a ridiculous title that really at the end doesn't make sense is a really intriguing and yeah. stimulating movie. Uh, so, I mean, and Fight Club fucking speaks for itself. I mean, we reference it all the fucking time. I don't, That's I don't true. have Fight to say. Fight Club is up there. It's really up there. If you want me to in any way say anything about Fight Club, just watch every other video we've done. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. So um, I'm not really sure who I'm siding with, so I'm going to kind of flesh this out as I go. So what I'm seeing... Well, you watch what you're fleshing out. <laughs> so, so what I'm seeing with Nolan is I'm seeing a trend of a big blockbuster, cool action movie, which we're getting with the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, you're getting that a little bit with Inception. Uh, and then you're getting a lot of cerebral, mind-melting type of movies, movies that are all about deep psychology, deep, like, mind games. You see that in Interstellar, you see that in Inception, a little bit in The Prestige, Memento, and Insomnia. So he seems to have two distinct styles. He has the big action, big-budget blockbuster movie, and he has the cerebral... Uh, like weird type of movie with Fincher you have a lot more drama Gone Girl is a straight up drama it's a good paced cool themed interesting character drama Girl with the Dragon Tattoo same thing big drama social network totally different type much lighter drama because Gone Girl and Dragon Tattoo are dark they're dark themes social network is a light themed good quality drama I mean, just, just right off what you're saying, I mean, you're basically painting a picture. I mean, you've got Nolan, who's kind of like, I'm going to operate on the surface, and then I'm going to dive down for a little bit of depth. Yeah. Whereas Fincher is more, I'm going to operate on this level of depth, and I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep there and really f get myself into it. So what's really happening is we're comparing two very different directors. We're comparing two people who are going to do a movie in very different ways. If you gave Christopher Nolan Alien 3, I think this is a perfect example. I think Christopher Nolan would do a great job with Alien 3 because he's that type of director. He takes a big action, very cool concept, and fleshes it out, makes it really interesting, makes it very cool. We saw that with The Dark Knight, The Prestige, Interstellar. Interstellar is a great example. Interstellar is a realistic sci-fi space movie. 
Throw in some goddamn aliens. He can pull it off. Just throw some aliens in with Matthew McConaughey. All have, right, all right, have, all right. You don't even have to throw them in. Throw them in. Just let them burst out of a stomach or two. Yeah. I mean, come on. But I think Christopher Nolan actually would have you know, been a better you know, pick for on Alien On a side 3. note, Pepto-Bismol so- solves nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, and diarrhea. I wonder if it can solve alien pregnancy <laughs> um i mean it, it's already working in that region maybe we just figured out how the covenant ends so it's really gonna come down though to nolan has a lot of plot driven movies um the dark knight it's on the it's on the line inception's definitely plot driven uh, memento fairly plot driven interstellar it's like it's teetering on the edge. Fincher, it's all character. All of it. I can't think of any of these movies. Gone Girl character, Girl with Dragon Tattoo, that girl, that's I mean, a character. And even just there, like, <laughs> listing, like, their, like when you speak about their differences, Nolan, at his best, Dark is Knight. the movies that are a complete contradictory to what Fincher is doing. Well, let's take their two bests. So just our opinions aside, mm. Fincher's best in pop culture and general opinion is Fight Club. I think Fight Club is would be the consensus of his greatest movie. Like, uh, similarly with Nolan, I think the consensus would be The Dark Knight. So mm. let's just look at those two, The Dark Knight and Fight Club. Two very different movies. Oh, for sure. They're both fairly dark, the way that they're themed. Uh, the things we're dealing with, the colors, the, the pacing, everything is very, it is very indeed. real, hyper-realistic. It's, it's very English. How is Fight Club English? Be- it's, no, it's very English style. Oh, because like the weather? Yeah, because it's dark and dreary. <laughs> you see that? I made a parallel that was completely mm. unnecessary and off topic. So, I mean, Fight Club, it's all about these characters. Really, it's all about the narrator. It's all about how the narrator is experiencing uh, Tyler Durden's influence and Project Mayhem. Whereas The Dark Knight, it's about Batman, but it's very much also about the Joker and Gordon and Two-Face. There's all these other things going on. So if you're going to have a movie that's a huge scope, a big scope, a big kind of... Uh, climax of events Christopher Nolan is your guy but if you want to have a deep introspective character movie David Fincher is the better choice yeah I mean, just looking at it like in perspective I mean Dark Knight and Inception those are just movies that have so much going on at all times and at the same time not a whole lot going on I mean there's so much significance put in the visual aspect as much as the character and the the development of the story whereas like Fincher really dives into a, a cerebral aspect that takes us into the places of the human mind that makes everyone curious well the cerebral part that you're talking about the the cerebral part in Fight Club in Zodiac uh maybe even in gone girl a little bit it's much more realistic it's much more within the character with nolan the cerebral parts like the prestige it's all about deception Mm. and then even in memento it's really the plot and how people are taking advantage of this guy's condition and inception it's all the world it's all this new concept and teaching you about how these dreams work fincher's cerebral movies compared to nolan's his are truly cerebral nolan's uh, is really a plot that's been made very complicated using elements of that so if you had to pick you already pretty much picked fincher it's tough for me to say it's tough for me to say the dark knight is my single favorite film out of the list and this is a very good list this list has many of my favorite films but if i had to pick one single favorite film out of this whole list the dark knight would be my pick with that being said oh i see slightly more consistency with fincher but that is a tough comparison they're just so different but i think fincher if i'm gonna pay for a movie i know it's gonna be good from either one 
but I feel like Fincher's going to be much more of an experience. Nolan's going to be much more of a movie. Nolan makes movies. Fincher makes experiences. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I... Oh, God, what a douche. <laughs> I, I truly can't you know, pick one of them, though. They're just, they're very different. They I, do a different I'm thing. I'm going to pick, and I'm going to pick Fincher. And it's, it really comes down to, first and foremost, I mean, the Girl to Dragon Tattoo is probably, definitively, my favorite movie of my adult life. I the, the depth and the scope that is involved in that is just so well done done it is an experience in itself as well as being like an observation it's just it i can't i can't not pick that and the way he does it i feel like you know when you're looking at them nolan gives you the bang where fincher gives you the buck He's really giving you that value. Okay. I, I can see that argument. So, I mean, I can't in good conscience pick one. I can't do it. I can't and I won't. You know what? Can't and I won't. You're fucking weak. I think Dunkirk is going to follow right I think is. you're just playing on the fact that the viewers like you and you don't want to lose that. No, I honestly can't pick. They're very different and they both do what they do amazingly. You know what? I'm a man. I take a stance. That's what I do. All right. So who do you guys pick? Do you think that we can truly pick one of these two? Do you agree with Jay, or do you think Nolan is the best? In a side note, if subscribe? you get a good, it, well, yes, please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the first thing we thought of when we saw this suggested numerous times is why the fuck do these people want this comparison? Because, like we said, they're very different directors, right? And we, like we, but they're we, consistent. They're we, both very they, consistent. They are. And we did this because you know, though we didn't see what you saw, well, they're quality people, quality movies. But tell us what you saw. Uh, maybe we can do a follow up to this uh, and address the things that maybe we're not seeing that you are. Do you think we have like a middle school audience? Like I don't understand your sense of humor. <laughs> it's everything's a blowjob penis <laughs> joke. It's like we have like thirty five percent females. You know that, right? What female do you think is like oh, another dick joke? Fuck yes! <laughs> like, <laughs> like, subscribe. Dude, how fucking awesome would that be? Even that much. <laughs> it's pretty good for us. I mean, we're um, pretty dick centric. <laughs> <laughs>